Today, we're going to talk about rod ends, an integral part of your suspension on your race car. Hi, I'm Damian Braz. This is Tim Anderson. Today we're going to be talking about rod ends, different styles, different types, when and where to use them. Tim, what do we want to look at when we're trying to figure out our rod ends? Uh, first thing you're going to ask is, you know, where is it going on the car? Uh, there's so many different areas on which rod ends are used. They're used in uh, suspension components, uh, shift and throttle linkages, maybe some adjustable bracing of of that nature so it just all depends on where you're putting it on your car okay well what i guess let's let's start with like a four link where what would we want to use on a four link <clears throat> so any suspension component we're gonna highly recommend you use a chromoly rod in uh something uh in our x series line uh strong chromoly steel um even our PC series, which is the, uh, the black rod ends that you see, uh, those have the highest strength. Those are what you want to use there, uh, just to not have any type of uh, failure, you know, all the power that you're putting to it, or you're on a racetrack and you're sure. bumping, banging wheels and stuff. You want to have a very strong, the strongest one you can put there. So on the X series, this is a one piece body and the ball's actually, the body's machined so the ball can be dropped in here and it's actually locked in. So that's going to take side loading better as well. Well, we talked about our Endura series, our X-series rod ends here, but we've got our two-piece PCY and our three-piece rod ends. When would you use those, Tim? Uh, both are a chromoly steel body. Uh, the two-piece uh, PC series has the ball uh, swedged inside the body. These typically have really good misalignment angles, so they can have a lot of movement to them a lot of strength, um, used on all sorts of, uh, you know, very common in the circle track race car world. Um, the three-piece chromoly rod end, this doesn't quite have the misalignment angle as that one does, but because of its three-piece design, with it has a, a ball, a race, swedged inside the housing, those are your three pieces. Uh, they typically move a little bit freer and um, just smoother and more efficient than some of the others. So uh, it's just, they don't handle the side load quite as much as a two piece. So you would want to install them into a double shear mount as opposed to a single shear uh, mounting. And then we've also got our high misalignment PCY series. That's typically going to be used on a, a dirt circle track car where there's a lot of suspension articulation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, those are uh, commonly used on um, the outer tie rod end on a, any type of circle track car, really, where you're getting a lot of travel. And the way the tie rod mounts up to the spindle, you just start running out of travel there and these high travel front ends. So uh, definitely a good one to have up there to make sure you're not binding your suspension up. And uh, lots of misalignment angles, you can tell. Uh, takes up a little more space. Uh, in the mount, but uh, a great rod end to have in that uh, situation. Uh, one of our most popular rod ends used in all sorts of applications would be our two-piece uh, carbon rod end. It's got a, more of a general use type rod end. Uh, Damien, where would be a situation where I would use a two-piece uh, kind of low load um, rod end? For a low load application or a non-critical application, the two pieces work great. Um, something this size or maybe a little smaller would be used on a sway bar end link. Something where if it is going to fail, it's not going to cause a catastrophic issue. So you really don't need that extra strength. Um, also the two piece works great in a, a throttle linkage or a shifter linkage. Now in an application like that, you would want to go to a metal on metal rod end where the ball is very free moving. You don't want to have your throttle linkage stick open. So a couple of good applications for those. Yeah, and just to add what Damien was talking about, there's a, a PTFE line or a, a metal to metal, which does not have PTFE between the ball and the race. Uh, the PTFE liner will run a little bit stiffer. Uh, it has a little more uh, kind of grab to it uh, with the liner in there. So anything that you need to move very free, like a throttle linkage or a shift linkage, something mm -hmm. of that nature, you would not need to use a PTFE line 
nor would you want to. So we've discussed everything on the table here except this red one. This is our A-series aluminum rod end. When would we want to use an aluminum rod end, Tim? Uh, various applications. I think they're mainly, you know, what they're mainly used for would be, you know, support braces, whether you got, say, a splitter or a spoiler where you got an adjustable brace on, uh, you know, something that needs to be really lightweight. Um, that's going to work well there. Uh, anything that's going to be, you know, non-critical, you, you wouldn't really use these on a suspension component. Um, it's not not a good weight savings, I guess, uh, alternative. Um, and then maybe, you know, something that's not critical or not having a high load on it. So uh, they work fine for like a sway bar in length, something mm -hmm. along the lines of that. Um, and yeah, there's supports or adjustments uh, that are, I guess, it's, it's don't see as high loads where you'd want to use a stronger rod in. Sure. So a question we get often would be, you know, where would you use a PTFE line rod in versus a metal to metal? Uh, I would say most of the time, um, you know, if you're doing anything suspension wise and you're not going to be down there taking a look at it, maintenance it, um, you're more likely you want to use a PTFE line because it is maintenance free. You don't need to, to lubricate it at all. It's self lubricating. Um, if you prefer to lubricate your own rod ends, uh, then you can go with the metal to metal. Um, you know, if you're having to put a rod end in a place where it's going to see really high temperatures, you would not want to use a uh, PTFE lined one there. Um, so if I'm building a support for my turbo and using rod ends on that, I probably want to go with a metal on metal. Correct. Yep. It's also good to remember that rod ends are a wear item and they are going to have to be replaced at some point. Um, you know, the life cycle on a rod end, it's going to depend on how it's being used, how much load, what type of conditions it's in. You know, is it dirty, sandy, is it a, a corrosive environment? So if you're using rod ends on your race car, you want to make sure you inspect them on a regular basis. When they start to loosen up and they start to get play in them, then you're going to want to replace them. Thanks for watching. Check us out at QA1.net and go drive it.